First practice is in the books for Miami Hurricanes training camp, and the defense is up 1-0. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, co-host of Locked on ACC and writer for allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Today's like a holiday, first day of fall practice. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College. For $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. On this episode, we will discuss which Miami Hurricanes newcomers, transfers, true freshmen, going to have the biggest impact this year. Uh, We will discuss our observations. Being back at the IPF, being back out on Green Tree for the first time since April, who stood out, what stood out today. And yes, we will talk about why the defense won the day today. And when I say we, I do bring company today. You guys probably already know this man does just he crushes it at canesinsight.com. Good friend of mine, friend of the program now, Peter Ariz is with us. So, Pete, uh, I, I saw you out there inside the IPF. Thankfully, we had the air conditioning working for us yeah. for that first part of practice. Uh, who and what stood out to you most when you entered the facility this morning? First off, Alex, thank you so much. Feels like the old days, man. Coming on with you at 560 uh, weekly, man. It was. It feels like a long time ago, but uh, glad to be doing this with you. And to me, Tyler Barron was the first, was the first guy that really stood out. Because listen, for the for the viewers, for the listeners out there, we got a limited time, 25 minutes or so in there, and. Look, the drills that we see are are limited, but you're looking for the body types. You're looking for the guys who stand out from a physical standpoint. Tyler Barron hovered over that. I mean, pretty much everyone on defense uh, other than, than, than Campbell from ULM. And to me, you're looking at a guy in Barron that obviously we understand was at Louisville this, this offseason, was at Tennessee before that. Big time NFL talent with him. But tall, long, and he's he's not lanky. He's got real muscle on him and size. So I think you add him to the mix there at edge with, of course, Ruben Bain, Keem Mesador, some of the other guys that we'll get into today. He could be a real force here and I think end up being one of the biggest pickups of the offseason for Miami. What well, you talk about Akeem Mesidor, uh, that reminds me, there are certain guys we didn't see participating or participating much in spring football who are our full go now. And Mesidor is one of those. And, you know, Ruben Bain talked about how excited today he is to have Mesidor back in the fold. Mesidor, you remember, he's been healthy for a while, but he was, he was waiting on those special cleats uh, just for his previous foot injuries. You know, he couldn't be full go till he got the cleats. He's got him now. Seeing Mark Fletcher back, Peter, that's another one because now we got that dynamic duo. I mean, there's there's a bunch of guys in the backfield who can play. It's not just two guys, but to have that dynamic duo now of Fletcher and also Damian Martinez, who we saw practicing for the first time. And man, the thing about that duo, Alex, is that normally when you when you talk about running back duos, you have thunder and lightning, right? You have you have two guys who are a little bit different. You've got two power backs with some explosive ability there so I think they're really going to be able to wear defenses down between the two of them and then obviously you have some guys behind that with speed but Fletcher what an awesome season he had last year as a true freshman obviously the injury in the bowl game you know was the worst case scenario especially for a guy who was was going to be taking over a lot of the snaps obviously in spring and continue continue to get more reps and obviously was not able to do that but 100%, I think that that duo is going to be pretty scary for defenses to have to prepare for. And it's like you can really wear teams down like that. I think for the first time in a while, you have the ability with that backfield to look. If Cam Ward is having an off day, if the, if the, the passing attack is not able to really sling it downfield, you can still win games by just relying solely on that run game. I don't expect that to be the case. Uh, very much because we expect Cam Ward to be dynamic and and the receivers as well. But 
that duo was special. And then touching on what you, you said about Akeem Mesador, he's a forgotten guy, I think, by some Canes fans because he didn't play last year and he missed the spring. I don't – look, the, the shoe thing, I, I don't really mind that he was not – out there during the spring as much obviously you want everyone out there but he's played a lot of football you know what he's going to bring you and another guy with legit nfl upside uh, before last season i was getting third fourth round type buzz on him with his with his versatility uh you know he can play outside he can play inside on pass rushing situations so we're all excited about ruben bain we just mentioned tyler Barron, but i do think people are forgetting about mesador a bit yeah, I want to go back to the offense because uh, people are going to be asking me if we don't talk about this. How, how did Cam Ward, how did the quarterbacks look? Now, I want to note, Peter said it early on, media viewing is limited. We get to watch, you know, first 25, 30 minutes. Uh, a, a lot of the really good stuff, Pete, happens in the non-viewing period when they're doing 11 on 11s outside. But we did obviously see the quarterbacks throwing passes this morning. So how did you feel about Cam Ward, Emory Williams, the whole group. Oh, listen, Cam in, in, in that setting for what we see is always going to look smooth and fluid. Um, he, he, he gets the ball out so quick. It's, a, it's such a nice release. And, and just the way he moves around back there, is he, is he Mike Vick? Is he Lamar Jackson? Not necessarily. He's not going to be busting off uh, big, big runs downfield consistently. But we already know the offensive line is a strength, but his ability to move in the pocket, elude, you can see that on display uh, in what we see for sure. And you understand that he's a guy that the team is continuing to, I don't think there's much more that they need to believe in. They, they believe in him already, right? It's not, he came in here and, and did what he had to do from a leadership standpoint in spring, but listen, it's great to see Emery back out there healthy. I, I, I did see Deani Hill had a pick off of him in, in, uh, in seven on seven work, right? So that was a nice play by Deani Hill, but Emery, to me, we understand he's a gamer, right? I, yeah. It's going to be interesting because obviously he's going to be in that battle for the backup quarterback spot with Reese Poffenbarger. But Emery, we understand the toughness he's going to bring to the table. We saw it against Florida State. I think it's about continuing to see where his where his ceiling is, right? I mean, that's that is where is his potential, right? Because he doesn't have the same moving ability as some of these other guys. But you understand he's a guy who. It's not going to lose you a game, right? And really throws a nice, a nice ball for sure. I think he excels in the red zone, especially Alex. His, his ability uh, to, you know, take something off of the ball and place it um, where only his receiver can can catch it. So excited about those guys. Reese Poffenbarger, I think similarly, I think he's he's a guy. Once the pads come on, you you really see what he's got. Um, but Judd Anderson, you know, he continues to stick out to me, Alex. I don't know about I you. I thought he looked good today. Honestly, I mean, he, I, I saw him throw one pick in practice, but I, I saw him make a ton of throw. I, I don't want to say, oh, he threw a pick. He, he played great. Everybody throws picks in practice. I thought he looked really good. The thing that sticks out to me is you get a guy who's 6'7 like that, Alex, and you're expecting like a statue, a big stiff guy. He Again, he's not he's not going to be a, a guy who's taking, you know, read option keepers and and running all over the place. But he's not stiff whatsoever, and we understand that he came in as a guy, as a developmental guy, as, as more of a project. And it's tough to get these guys a lot of reps during, during fall camp now, but he's someone to really monitor as – obviously, this is a you know, long-term discussion about Miami's quarterback situation next year, but he's someone that I, that I am intrigued by. Now, I do, when we come back, want to talk about a couple wide receivers, including a, a newcomer who just transferred that we got to watch for the first time. But uh, also want to talk about uh, the score being 1-0 in favor of the defense. Cam Ward said it. Reuben Bain agreed with it. Guys, we have so much coming up on this episode. We're recapping the first day of fall practice for the Miami Hurricanes. We are, by the way, exactly a month away from that road trip to Gainesville. The invasion of the swamp is going to happen one month from now. You want to keep it locked. We're only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And you know I'm only getting started with the Game Time app. Guys, this is the only ticket app that I use because I'm getting incredible deals last minute. I don't have to stress over last minute tickets. I haven't bought my tickets yet for Gainesville because I know the tickets are going to keep going down the closer we get to the event. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down 
the closer it gets to first pitch. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. You get all-in pricing. You can see the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Getting the panoramic view from your seat is a game changer. You see it right there in the app before you buy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're also proudly brought to you by Factor Meals, guys. You're getting delicious food that takes only two minutes to prepare and serve. Nutrition, you're keeping your summer goals alive. Meet those wellness goals in time for that trip to the beach. Thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto, Factors Fresh, Never Frozen Meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. No matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals. Over 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. You'll always have new flavors to explore. Keep the kitchen time to a minimum. Factor, factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein in intake, avoid meat if that's what you want to do, or simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnCollege50 and use code LockedOnCollege50 to get 50% off your first purchase plus 20% off your next month. That's code LockedOnCollege50 at factormeals.com slash LockedOnCollege50. Try it out, guys. You'll love it. Factor Meals. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Make sure you check out Locked on ACC for your second listen. Kenton Gibbs and I host that show, taking you around the conference, ACC football previews, lawsuits, everything that's going on, conference realignment. Make sure you check that out. We are joined here on Locked on Canes by Peter Ariz from canesinsight.com. So, uh, you know, Peter, um, it was pretty clear from the words of Cam Ward Miami's quarterback and one of the team leaders and another one of those team leaders, Ruben Bain, that the defense won the day today. We'll get we'll hear from Ward first talking about the defense being one and oh, and then Ruben Hurricane Bain from that defense reacting. They up right now, they are one oh, I believe. Uh we didn't we weren't explosive as an offense today as we need to be. And, you know, we just didn't play our brand of football the whole time. We had spurts of it here and there, but we gotta be consistent. That's the biggest thing for us. So they are one oh. Yeah, a thousand percent. We were getting after it from seven on inside runs all the way to the last team call it. Uh, a lot of young guys scored some interceptions. A lot of guys made some plays on from the second level all the way to the D line. So we look pretty good as a whole unit. But uh, I'm pretty sure the office is going to try to bring it tomorrow. So we all look forward for another game. Now, Peter, I think usually first day of camp, um, whether it's pro football or college football, the defense is usually ahead this time of year, but I do find it interesting that the defense clearly won the day today because I saw the offense win more days than not during spring football. So I guess the tables are turning here. Yeah, I, I agree with what you said that normally early in camp, the the offense, it, it takes a little bit time for things to gel. There's a, there's a lot of moving parts, but I'll say this, Alex, you look at the additions from the end of spring to where we are today. Obviously the offense added Damian Martinez, added a, a Sam Brown, who we expect to be a really explosive receiver for Miami. But defensively, you look at the impact guys they added. We talked about Tyler Barron, Simeon Barrow, who, man, talk about another guy who looks the part there at defensive tackle, and we expect to slide in and be a starter. Deani Hill, we understand that the defense needed to add another cornerback right in, in, in the portal, and they did that in Deani Hill, a guy who is familiar with, with Coach Guidry and Coach Chevis Jackson. Jalen Alderman, another linebacker from, from Louisville who has played a, you know, a lot of ACC football and been very productive. So that's four guys right there, and I'm, I'm probably missing someone off the top of my head, but those are four guys who have a chance to get – I mean, Barron and Barrow, I think, are starters. Alderman's going to be in a battle there, but is going to get a lot of snaps. Deani Hill is going to be heavily in the mix there at cornerback. So you look at the additions there, and I think there are more meaningful additions uh, in the off season there. And I think positions of need, right? Like it's not that the defense had a, had a bad spring or anything, but I think all of us who were out there and, and talking to people and things of that nature understood there were holes to be filled defensively. I think the the offense, you didn't have Fletcher. So there, you know, you, you were missing 
one of your top running backs. Damian Martinez was not here yet, but you had a quarterback and you, you understood that things were moving in the right, right direction there. There were more holes to fill defensively. So I think that's it's a good sign early on. I, if we keep hearing this as the case, then you know we'll, we'll have to check back in a couple of weeks and see if, if, if that's what it is. But I look at the additions and again, guys who have played a lot of football, man. These are these are productive players at you know other big time programs that have had really good film against other power or not power five anymore, but power conference schools. Yeah. Um, so to me, I think it's a good sign in that respect. I also, I like the way Ward said it. Like, I like his accountability and, and kind of being able to to get to know Cam a little bit since he arrived. Like, he he probably likes to have now that chip on his shoulder heading into tomorrow. Like, heading into day two, he mentioned we weren't explosive enough today. I mean, th this is the guy that everyone says talks a ton of trash in Ward, which a lot of quarterbacks don't do. You know, friendly, brotherhood, teammate type trash talk stuff. But uh, I feel like Ward is going to have an extra gear in practice tomorrow. Yeah, and he has something to get with the guys on. You know, I mean, look, yeah. this this is what camp's about, right? Is is working through these growing pains, these days that that may be a grind for one side of the football. So let's see how they come back next practice and 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 bounce back. But I agree with you. His his personality is that type. We don't. We're not going to go back and and uh, you know belittle who was here before we won't do that but i think the personality is different right and i think yes. he's someone who will light a fire under the guys in the locker room um after a day like this i think different is a is a very kind way to put it that they he is very very different from uh from his predecessor in a miami uniform and you know i, I wanted to talk about some of his weapons because you know peter i i was looking at uh, watching Sam Brown pretty closely today, first first practice, first time I get to see him in person, and uh, he's you could see the the speed and the explosion. People were telling me about. I I almost feel like you see it more in person than when you watch his Houston highlights. Uh, and you know Ray Ray Joseph had some plays today. Mario Cristobal said after practice, this was probably Ray Ray's best practice in a Miami Hurricanes uniform. Yeah, starting with Sam Brown, I mean, just talking to NFL scouts, he's probably the guy in terms of receiver that has the, the, the highest upside in terms of the physical, but the speed, you mentioned it, the size. Restrepo and Jacoby George, we, we kind of know what we're getting there. I think there probably is another gear for Jacoby George to get to, which is continuing part of his maturation process, but obviously a great season for him last year. But I think Sam Brown brings you something a little bit different to the table in, in terms of his size, right? He's not a, listen, he's not, he's not going to go body you, but he is a bigger receiver, a taller receiver. There's about six, one, six, two um, with legit deep speed and ability after the catch Ray, Ray Joseph. I mentioned him in my, in my instant reaction pod today as well as someone who, I think during the spring, we started to notice his body had changed, right? Everyone expects these freshmen to come in and light it up right away. And, you know, we all hope for that, that to be the case. We saw it with Ruben Bain last year on the defensive side of the ball and Fletcher on offense. But some guys just need, they need a year in the weight room. They, and maturation-wise, we, we knew the work that Ray Ray was, was putting in. But he looks, he looks really stout. He told me yesterday at media day that he feels like he's better equipped to take hits. I actually felt the same way about Robbie Washington, too. He told me he's up to 195. Um, so I think he, both of those guys are receivers to monitor. It's a lot of, lot of numbers in that room right now, as, as we know, and a lot of guys, starting with Restrepo and George, as the returning guys that we know what, what they bring to the table. But I don't want to forget a guy like Isaiah Horton either. I, nothing yeah. happened. That, that made me say it, but like that is a guy who hypothetically should fill the role of Colby Young as that bigger body target, um, you know, obviously in the red zone and third downs where you just need to go get a, you know, you need to go get that first down. You need to go score that touchdown. So it's an exciting group, but I agree with you 100%. And with Mario, that Ray Ray looks like a guy who, who has taken that next step. Now, when you mention freshmen who few and far between the ones that do like come in just ready from the jump to contribute at the power four level obviously Ruben Bain was that this year do you think Elijah Lofton at, at tight end or tight end or wherever you line him up because he can line up anywhere do you think he could be that guy this year who has the Bain impact 
Listen, don't take my word for it. Take take Mario's word for it, right? Because yeah. he said it during the spring. He said he said he is that he he could be that Ruben Ruben Bain type of of impact player. Um, and look, everyone. I think there's always going to be a debate about is he a tight end? Is he a running back? Is he an H back? I don't concern myself with that that much. Just get him the ball and let him let him go do his thing. But talk about an absolute bowling ball. You know, we were right there next to the tight ends today, and in the open field, he does not look like someone that defensive backs are going to want to tackle against a lot of these linebackers. I think he has he has too much quickness and agility, um, and he's he's just a football player, very tough, as Mario has has alluded to before. Excited about him, and let me let me mention another freshman, Alex Jordan Lyle. He stood out to me as well, just from a physical standpoint. I think, look, we understand it's a pretty loaded running back room. So is he going to be? Is he going to be? The third guy right off the bat, I don't know if that's the case. Obviously, there's some some other guys behind Fletcher and Damian Martinez in terms of A.J. Allen, Chris Johnson, who I, I think maybe just have a have a leg up just from having having been there. But Jordan Lyle would not surprise me, man. Mid-season or so starts – we know that, unfortunately, that there will be injuries at that position. That's just the nature of the position. And he's a guy who definitely looked the part to me, man. Well, when we come back, I want to dig into uh, the part of the defense that I, I don't think it's fair to say it's going to be a weakness, but it's a question mark because the you got a little bit more turnover and youth in the defensive secondary. I want to get Pete's take on it. Peter Ariz from Canes Insight is with us. We're not done yet. You guys want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. Guys, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. If you want to take your everyday or experience to the next level, sign up to become a Locked on Canes insider. I include a link in the show description below. When you become an insider, you get text messages directly from my phone to yours with show updates, breaking news, recruiting scoops, one-on-one -on -one questions and answers. We're going to do a Q&A show later on this week, maybe on Friday or Saturday with the insider. So make sure you try it free for 14 days. Then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month, give you a lot of added value on there on the Locked on Canes Insiders chat. Peter Ariz from Canes Insight is with us. You know, Peter, I'm glad you brought up uh, Deani Hill getting an interception in seven on seven today. That's one of the new faces in the defensive secondary. Uh, outside of Daryl Porter, uh, there's going to there's a lot of new DBs, some young guys, some experienced guys like Nish Powell who came in. Um, how do you see, uh, where do you see outside of Porter, which is obvious, who, who do you think are the other starters in that unit? So the interesting thing about this position, Alex, I think we're doing a lot more projecting here than some of these other spots we're talking about because you're bringing in a lot of transfers, not, not, not at this position, but at these other positions where they've proven and they've been productive players at a high level, right? And then you have returning guys, like we talked about a receiver, Restrepo and Jacoby George, where you, you know what they are, right? You have a good idea of what you're getting there. At defensive back at corner, we're, we are projecting. I, I, after Porter, I think Damari Brown has the ability to be as, you know, as good as, as anybody in the country. I mean, he, he physically looks the party looking rocked up out there today. I mean, he almost looks like a linebacker, how, how, how big and strong he is. But he came on late last year, right, and start, played very well in that Florida State game in particular. But you're still – the story is still to be written for him. I'm a big fan of his talent. I expect him to be one of the starters here uh, at corner. I know Jadis Richard, I think, is another guy in the mix there. I think he's someone that Canes fans kind of forget about at times coming over from Vanderbilt. But I know he, I talk a lot about the NFL draft and, and projections type stuff because I, I talk to scouts, and he's someone who sticks out to them from a physical standpoint. Length, 
size, speed, right? But again, we're projecting this, right? He didn't he didn't play all that much last year for Miami. So that's that's the difference with this position. Mish Pau, what position is he going to play? Is he going to be more of a nickel? Is he going to be a safety, right? Deani Hill, I think he is, is a very talented player. Love his versatility. Had a great conversation with him at media day yesterday. He's excited to get started here. A lot of familiarity, like I said, with Coach Gidry, Coach Chavis Jackson, but taking a step up in the competition, right? So, so there's always going to be that, that a little bit of that question, right? Big fan of his, think he's going to be a really good player here at Miami, but we just haven't seen it yet, right? So to me, we will learn a lot more throughout spring because I think we have a good idea of what Miami has at receiver talent-wise. And seeing those matchups every day, will reveal a lot for me. And then at safety, I feel pretty good about Jaden Harris. Again, yeah, played last year, more of a projection, but played last year. Coach Cristobal felt really good about what he was doing when Cam Kitchens went down with his injury against a and last year. Markeith Williams, another guy in the mix there at safety, but a lot of unproven guys. And I think that is probably, um, you know, why there is a little bit, I don't want to call it concern, but it's more of a wait and see approach for me until I say, man, I feel very good about this position. I would look at Robert Stafford as someone yeah. at corner um, with the with the potential and ability to move up. And then we, I think we really have to pay very close attention to a couple of these young guys and Ryan Mack and OJ Frederick. OJ Frederick in particular is someone that Coach Guidry was talking very highly of yesterday at media day. He looks. He, I think he told me he's up to one one ninety or so after being in the one mid one seventies range when when he got on campus a couple months ago. So look for those guys because there's an opening. There there is that that possibility for one of these young guys to take snaps um, from some of these guys who have been here a year or two already. So I'm looking at those guys to take take a you know make an impression I should say in camp. But that is probably the the position group that there are the most question marks, so to speak. Well, it was tremendous stuff here from Peter Ariz. Uh, follow him on X at Peter Ariz. Check out his work at Kane's Insight. You also had uh, an awesome interview with Jonathan Taylor on the Agency podcast where he he talked about uh, about Damian Martinez, who he's worked out with. So people, if you haven't seen that, or you probably have seen it, you should check it out. Because even like Peter, when I was talking with uh, – with Damian Martinez yesterday, he mentioned, "Oh, you've probably seen that that clip of uh, of Jonathan Dev." Like, yes, yeah. I have. So that that thing is out there. Yeah, and and yeah, that's the new podcast I'm doing with with First Round Management, the agency that that I work at as well. So go check that. I will be doing a bunch of cool stuff. But yeah, man, that was when when I had to ask Jonathan Taylor that question because I know they had been working out when I talked when I interviewed Damian. Um, you know when he first came in, he mentioned how he was able to work with Frank Gore senior, Frank Gore jr. And Jonathan Taylor. So talk about iron sharpening iron there. Um, but yeah, pretty eye opening stuff because Jonathan Taylor was like, man, I saw this guy and I, he was, he was like two thirty five when he came in and, and I was kind of looking at him like, uh, we'll, we'll see. It's a big back. Let's see how he's moving. And then once they started going through the drills, he was, he was very impressed. But Martinez, another guy, man, once those pads come on, we will start to, I think, really see the best of him because he he's an imposing force and he's a bruiser. Yeah, it's weird with Martinez because obviously, like I, I saw him just like you know, kind of in uh, in street clothes at media day yesterday. Saw him today with the the helmet on and the jersey. Like I, I don't know, like where does he hide the weight? Because he doesn't look like he's that heavy. Because and he doesn't move that way. It's like muscle ways, to- man. Muscle, yeah. Not not that you and I would know that, but uh, yeah, the muscle ways. And I think <laughs> I, I think you look at you look at the lower half, what you look at for running backs, man. And I and he's those yeah. big, powerful legs. Um, but yeah, that's he did lose some some weight once he started training in this uh, South Florida heat, which he he was already a big guy. I think he played. I think he told me he played last season around two thirty. So that is a it's a big back. And I look. Getting leaner and, and getting a little quicker is never going to hurt him at that position because the size is already there. So excited about him. I, you know, NFL potential as well. But um, what an addition for Miami. And and again, opposing defenses, they just, I, I don't think they're going to want to tackle that guy. So I don't think so. I, I, I don't. Well, we appreciate 
Peter's time. Guys, make sure you follow him. Check out his work. We appreciate everyone being in here on Locked on Canes. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. And day two tomorrow, we'll see if the offense evens the score. We'll talk to you then on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.